Hi, my name is Joy Fennell and I'm a makeup artist here in New York City. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis back in 2008. One day I woke up and my uh, left hand was hurting, my wrist area was hurting. And I was like, okay, um, I've had carpal tunnel, like a touch of carpal tunnel before. So I went and got one of those carpal tunnel guards. But then my right hand started hurting and I was like, okay, that's weird. You know, so I went and got one for that hand too. So I'm walking around with two carpal tunnel wrist um, guards on my hand and it was still it still wasn't working I was just like well maybe it just hasn't worked yet so then um, slowly um, I started noticing that I couldn't lift my arms over my head so that's when I really started getting concerned and really started thinking that something was really wrong so that's when I made an appointment to see my doctor now I'm like really kind of scared um, that's when my GP uh, was like, well, it sounds like you have rheumatoid arthritis. So she sent me to a rheumatologist. Um, once I went to the rheumatologist, they ran some tests and they confirmed that I was um, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And then that's when, um, you know, it really got real. Stuff got real. They started putting me on medication. Um, first, I started taking prednisone. Then I started taking Plaquenil. Um, they wanted to put me on methotrexate, but then I went home and started Googling it, and I was like, mm, I don't think so. So, because I really heard a lot about that one, and I, that one really scared me. I just took those Plaquenil and prednisone, and I kind of took those drugs, and I was like, okay, I'll take these for right now. But I quietly became worse. And it started getting to the point where I started becoming like bedridden. But because I'm so stubborn, I was like, I still don't want to take these drugs. I've always come from a place of, okay, you want me to take these drugs, but they're just covering up what's going on. They're not actually fixing the problem. So I wanted to know what, how can I actually solve what's going on? Even though I know people always say that rheumatoid arthritis is not curable and it might not be on paper, but I don't believe in just this putting something over the problem, you know, like masking the problem. Why can't we fix it? Or why can't I at least get to a point where I can live a different type of lifestyle and then work on it? By me being so stubborn, I know that I was also scared, also getting worse, you know? And I actually started, that's when I started getting really scared and started thinking that I might have to get a caretaker because I was almost bedridden from it. At this point, I was like, probably like um, early 30s and I was just like, I just can't, this can't be right. Like what's going on? I can't be 30 and already needing a caretaker. So I started doing my own independent research and I started realizing that diet really had a significant effect on what was going on. Like I just was reading stories and looking for like other people who were diagnosed with it, who were somehow beat it. And, and I wanted to know like, well, if they could do it, like I could do it, but how did they do it? And it always came back to diet. Growing up, like I was, I'm a sugar addict. Like I like sugar, like I like cookies, I like cake, I like all of that, you know? And I was also um, a lot more overweight at the time. I was probably like 100 pounds overweight. I just went on a quest to try to fix myself with mind and um, food. And I started seeing a therapist because another thing that I also read was that it's also um, a lot of uh, aggression and anger that's inside of you that, you know, you need to let out. So I started being like, well, I need to meditate and I need to do these things. And I started doing so much better. I found a program called the Patterson program. It really helped me out a lot. Um, he was, he was also diagnosed with RA. So I moved from being bedridden to now I could walk, but I had the, I, I needed the use of a cane. And I'm like 30 something with a cane. And of course that messed with my mind a lot. It's like a never ending battle with trying to find different ways to work on this disease. Because even though you might have it okay on one end, it's like the disease will keep trying to find another way to infiltrate your body. What really helped me a lot was the food aspect was when I ate well, that's when my symptoms would diminish. When I ate 
horribly, that's when they would come back full force. So at one point I was doing really well. And then um, I had a tragedy in my family. My brother um, I was killed. And once that happened, that's when I started getting worse again. And I relapsed because I think I hold a lot of stuff in. So after that happened, I gained back the weight I lost everything so it just kind of spiraled out of control so i was like you know what let me get it together so that's when a friend of mine named charles chen really um took interest in my story because he also um dealt with weight itch weight issues and stuff like that as well so he really helped me um reclaim my uh my life my healthy lifestyle because he's a health coach so i started researching again and um that's when I came across this program called My Me, ran by this lady named Meta. I met her at like a, a, a panel where her company was pitching, and it just so happened that you know they deal with autoimmune disorders, and that's when my ears perked up, and I was like wait what and we got my food back on track and um um my water back on track and um just trying to um figure out what it is that my body might be allergic to to why i'm i, I then have um my flares so uh, a lot of it is my dairy like eating dairy i'll always feel something like the next day or even within the hour that i eat it and then also you know, if I eat something that has a lot of sugar in it. I've been working on trying to 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 get better and better. And I'm not on any medication any longer. I frustrate the hell out of my rheumatologist because I think sometimes they don't really get that you can actually heal from from things, you know, and uh, that you don't need to take medication. Even though, like, trust me, I don't, I, I personally don't judge anybody that does want to take medication because this disease is so horrible. You'll do anything to, to try to combat it. So I get it, you know? But for me, was always really scared of the side effects. Well, it might make me worse than what I already am. And, and, um, and that was um, a big deal to me. During this time, um, I've, uh, I was recommended to have knee replacements for both knees. My thing is, I feel like surgery should be the last option. It shouldn't be your first option always. And so I was just like, well, let me see how I can avoid having this surgery. So one of the ways I avoided having surgery is by losing weight. And that really helped my knee situation. Then further down the line, I had a neck situation where they wanted to operate on my neck and put, um, like fuse my neck or something like that. And I was like, eh, let me see, because that I was, I was, if I can't have you do my knees, I was like, I'm really not going to have you do my neck. You know, the doctor was like the, not just the doctor, but the nurse was kind of rude to me, was kind of like, you know, kind of like, um, I felt like they were kind of bullying me and kind of like making me feel like no like you have to have this this is one thing that i have learned after going through this journey is that this is my body and i determine what happens in my body no no one else i will take what they say and i will you know like of course make an educated decision but i'm not going to get pushed into doing something that i don't think i need to do if, because my thing is, I want to try my, my, on my own to, uh, alleviate the problem or fix the problem on my own. And if that doesn't work, then I'm totally open to the suggestion of surgery. But until then, I don't want surgery as my first option. After I decided that, um, losing weight was probably my best bet for my knees after losing a hundred pounds, like at least 100 pounds because another thing I did was I stopped weighing myself. And once I decided to let the the, the scale go, that's actually when I started losing weight. That's when I started um, realizing that I didn't need my cane any longer. If, say for instance, if I do need that surgery later, I could, it's put off for a while. In terms of my neck issue, I started seeing a chiropractor. He was amazing, I love him. Um, but then I also started seeing a rolfer. And that experience, of course, is a little bit more challenging because they really get into your fascia, but it, I, I swear it worked wonders on me. Like I actually don't feel pain in my neck any longer. So I feel like uh, I've been doing the work and I'm like, I will figure it out. And 
I, like I said earlier, I uh, really frustrate my rheumatologist because I just don't, just don't take what they say um, written as law. So at this point in my life, um, I am walking normally. I still have my difficulties because I'm not perfect with my diet all the time. If I do eat something that's wrong, I do feel it. Like even sometimes walking downstairs is a little bit more challenging right now, but I'm determined to get that as well. I know that's gonna happen. I no longer feel the, the swelling and the pain in my hands like I used to. When you deal with an autoimmune disorder that attacks your joints, you start to get anxiety about just getting up in the morning because you know that once you put your foot on the ground, you're gonna feel a lot of pain. Before I felt really like sad because I didn't know where my life was gonna end. You know, like I didn't know if I was going to need a caretaker. I didn't know if I was, my career was over. So I was just like, you know what, this is what's going on. I've got to find a way to handle it. And I feel like I've kind of worked on it to where like, you know, it might not be, I might not be a hundred percent, but I know I'm a lot better than I was, you know, like I'm where I was like, 30%, I'm at least 80% now, and that 50% is making me actually have a life again, and I appreciate that.